At the time, I was a reporter here in Boston, and you were a teacher. And we were both kind of starting out our careers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I started in 1974, which was the year that busing started yeah. in Boston. I was a brand new teacher. I just graduated from college. I was the first grade teacher. And it was a very tough year. I spent the entire year not one of the teachers in the building speaking to me. Oh, that's terrible. It, it was. It was horrible. I was really on my own. And uh, one time I did get surrounded by a group of men who were screaming at me and calling me nigger. And the police pulled up and actually took me away. And uh, after that, I would go to the police station in City Square and they would drive me into work. Were you afraid all the time? I should have been afraid. Now, looking back, I mean... I can't run that fast <laughs> and not through a crowd of grown men. Um, and there was nothing at the beginning of the school year to say, okay, like Boston has fought busing for 20 years. What do we do now? Yeah, We just right. throw everybody together and it's all going to work out. The second year, what they decided to do to support the black teachers was to get a van. And I said, whatever you do, just don't take us down Bunker Hill Street because we could hear the helicopters above. That's right. The motorcycle police had, yeah, the had assembled. I think I know where this is going. You yeah. got it. He takes us right down yeah. Bunker Hill Street, but now I'm the only one in the van. And he's beep, 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 trying to part the crowds to get us by. You know, I was briefly covering Charlestown ah. that year, 75, mm -hmm. and there were thousands of people oh. lining the streets. And it was so ugly and so aggressive. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, somebody did pick up a brick and throw it through a, the window of a school bus with little kids inside. So I can't imagine what it was like to drive down that. I would say that time I was terrified. But once I got into the classroom, I was fine. I loved my class, and I did have a responsibility to make sure that the black students who were coming every day under such turmoil and pressure that they got every single thing that they could get from me. Now, remember, I had Asians, Blacks, and very few white kids. Mm -hmm. So I've always felt an obligation, maybe in different ways to different groups of kids. But I think that when such a sacrifice is made, that we owe it to them to make sure that the sacrifice works for them. Now, I can say this because you won't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes people end up the right person in the right job. Mm -hmm. And being a teacher, you were the real deal. You had a kind of commitment and passion for the work you were doing, but you don't seem to be bitter. Now, maybe I'm wrong about that. You're right. There was no other career I ever wanted. And of course, now we can look back and say, did we need to integrate? A better solution might have been to have the money come there. I believe that if you had built a state-of-the-art school that offers every single thing in the middle of Mattapan, that the white kids would get there rather than throw the whole city into turmoil. So looking back, it has not worked. <laughs>